What's up, gamers? It's your friendly neighborhood YouTube guide man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm still workshopping uh, intros. Leave a comment if you have any ideas. I am here with my first guide video on Tears of the Kingdom. It's been out for a little over a week now. And, uh, you know, I'm over here with a full-time job, so I'm not like these other YouTubers that can just pump out, like, a billion guides in the first week, covering literally every possible conceivable game-breaking exploitable thing ever. I'm over here just playing through the game leisurely, and uh, I figure most people, most of you watching, are probably in that same boat. So... I wanted to cover what is probably like subtly the most important mechanic in the game, which is fuse. I want this video video to be more casual friendly and just really walk you through the more nuanced stuff about fuse as a power and then kind of, you know, the ways you can expect fuse to carry your power progression throughout the game. Okay, so I'll pull up my weapons here. I'm sure if you guys are looking at this video, you've played through the intro. If not, just stop watching and go do that. <laughs> I don't want to ruin anybody's experience here. But you're going to quickly realize that weapons in this game function totally different from Breath of the Wild. Your base damage on your weapons is very, very low compared to what you found in Breath of the Wild. And if you haven't already, you'll notice that the damage numbers on weapons don't really get higher at all. Right, so you need to be using Fuse to get stronger in this game. That's really the the secret mechanic to ha stronger weapons and being able to output more damage in this game. I pulled up my weapon wheel here. You can see I've just got a regular old Traveler's Sword, right? So they, they, the game tells you how Fuse works generally. You know, I can drop uh, another weapon here and fuse the two weapons together, which is amazing and creates some hilariously fun weapon mix-ups and stuff like that it just looks great i love that they just were literally like just glue them next to each other and who cares like it doesn't matter some of this stuff you have that's crazy uh that can actually like change the look of the weapon but most of the fuses you're gonna see <laughs> just put them together and i love it so you can fuse weapons together, and that's kind of going to be a go-to easy method to get stronger damage at the beginning of the game. However, you're going to quickly realize that that's not really going to be efficient. Really, the secret sauce to getting stronger weapons through fuse is going to be monster parts. If you guys are familiar from Breath of the Wild, uh, every monster drops different parts parts and you know in Breath of the Wild most of that just had to do with cooking ingredients right but in this game everything has a fuse attack power you can see listed below the item name there and that is really what's gonna there's a reason you have a sorting wheel option to fuse attack power right so this is really the secret to getting stronger in the game but so while you can fuse two weapons together really it's going to be more efficient to keep every weapon you get and fuse on monster parts to get stronger Early on in the game, the monsters that you find are going to be the base tier of, of each monster. So it's in this game, they differentiate strength through colors. So you have red, uh, blue, white, silver, and then gold probably if they ever add master mode. But basically for the sake of you guys, what you guys need to know is you're going to have your, you know, your, your base red tier weapon drop, which is going to be just the name of the item, Moblin Fang, Bacoblin Horn, uh, Lizalfos Talon, right? Stuff like that. And then as you progress through the game, you'll start encountering blue versions of those. And so you're going to find blue Bacoblin Horns and uh, blue... Here's blue Moblin Horns. So, and that progresses on to uh, white and then silver. And each tier is going to increase the fuse attack power of the that exact same item right pretty quickly on i would encourage you guys to drop the habit of fusing two weapons together and instead you're going to want to take your base weapons here uh and look for you know your basically your strongest fuse attack power things and pop, put those on there now i would encourage you obviously to use your really really strong stuff sparingly uh and that would be your lionel stuff but uh for the most part you know, never use a weapon that isn't fused, right? There, there's just no reason. There's just You're just losing out on power. 
it's yeah you got to fuse everything you use okay that's generally how fuse works i want to talk about some nuance behind the power and that has to do with um the move set right so uh whatever base weapon you have that gets upgraded that's going to be the attack set that you use so halberds or spears have the thrust a very attack or very fast attack speed weapons uh, you've got your two-handed swords, your two-handed clubs, stuff that uh, is obviously really slow. Uh, and then you have your one-handed stuff, which, uh, you know, here's, oh, spoiler alert, Master Sword. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't show that. Like these two here, the two uh, swords that I fused together already. So in Breath of the Wild, typically you saw, uh, you know, a pretty huge difference in damage numbers between the spears slash halberds the swords, and the, the two-handed weapons, the claymores, right? And obviously that makes sense because you have the different attack speeds with them. So it kind of, for the most part, kept the DPS per each weapon similar. I don't know, that's <laughs> I'm getting really, that's not very casual friendly. <laughs> so I don't know, Brad, you can keep that in there. I don't know, it's up to you. However, in this game with the really, really low base damage numbers on all your weapons, that's not going to be as much of a thing. So you can really get almost the exact same damage, total damage numbers from your spear as you could your claymores, uh, which really makes your, your spears and your halberds uh, a lot stronger than they were in Breath of the Wild, which I think is cool because they kind of just weren't, they didn't scale well in Breath of the Wild, right? The other sort of nuance, I guess, thing that you should focus on when looking at weapons to fuse is the buffs that they have on them. Okay, so you can see down here a few of these weapons have buffs and it lists them right beneath the name. You'll learn these buffs as you play through the game. Some of the ones that I think are, are, are strong callouts are Desperate Strength, which doubles the damage of the item uh, when you're on your last Heart of Health. Um, charge Attack Stamina Up, that's pretty straightforward. You've got uh, you know some of the throwback weapons from the first game, Wind Razor, that's going to be a unique buff that you're only going to find on, like, eight-fold weapons. Quick charge, right? That just means you can do your charge attack faster. Stuff like that. If you're looking to be really efficient with, like, your, your best monster drops and putting those only on your best weapons, I personally would recommend looking for buffs like Desperate Strength or um, the, the buff that you have on Zora weapons that increases it when... that literally will double the strength when uh, your weapon is wet. So stuff like that, I think, is just by far the best. So if you're, uh... so let's say you're early off in the game and you're having a hard time killing some of these monsters. You're going to find that uh, monsters have a lot more health than they did in the first game. And that's because you can get some pretty insane damage numbers uh, with the fuse ability. So let's just go through like a realistic, uh, I guess, progression path that you guys are going to experience when playing through this game with fuse so uh you're going to have these base weapons and early on you're only going to be finding red monsters so red um macoblins right now i'm seeing some blue ones because i've played a little bit more so i don't really see many red enemies so basically what i would recommend you know if you have no strong weapons right now go find a nearby monster camp they're all over the place and you want to focus on the Bokoblins because they're the weakest. So take these out. So, you know, say I have my base weapon. I have nothing to uh, fuse it with. Boom. Go and kill the Bokoblins. They're the weakest. And now you have Bokoblin horns that you can pull up. I'm going to go and find that and drop it. And now I can, with my fuse power selected, fuse it onto my Claymore. Okay? You're going to find that sometimes that literally will change the way the weapon looks completely, which is super cool. Sometimes it doesn't so much. <laughs> it just kind of puts stuff on top. Um, but it's fun to see all the different uh, combinations of stuff. Starting off, I'd say literally go beat a Bokoblin and put the horn on. Now you have a stronger weapon, probably like doubled in strength. Now you can fight some uh, Moblins here. And don't let them blow you up. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was close. Let's... Wow, missed a bunch. And then let's finish them off really quick. You're generally going to see that uh, after fighting a Bokoblin, Moblins are going to give you the next tier up as far as stronger uh, fusible materials. 
that's kind of cool that this one now kind of is like a scythe. That's kind of sweet. After Moblins, you've got Lazalfos. So Lazalfos are going to be in more uh, elemental areas. Water areas are going to be a, a, an easy go-to if you want to find Lazalfos. If you're just like getting smacked around early on, which I mean, I did. I'm going to be honest. Things beat me up. I tried fighting my first Lionel and literally, I, I'm pretty sure it took me like three hours, but I was committed. I had to beat him. I couldn't leave. <laughs> uh... So, yeah, you're going to want to look for Bacoblins, then Moblins, then Lazalfos. Uh, and then they also have, you know, a couple new enemy types in this game, like Boss Bacoblins, which are super cool. Those are going to be stronger. Um, Hinoxes. And then, obviously, the strongest fusible stuff is going to come from Lynels, right? So all these YouTubers have been making fuse videos on, like, oh, here's how you can get super strong. And it's all about killing Lynels, which... Like, sure, that's fine, but most people aren't going to be able to, like, really, really learn all the mechanics of, like, consistently killing Lynels. You're also going to come across the Zonai enemies, and these guys uh, have their own set of horns that they drop that are going to give you powerful fuse power as well. Here we've got a, I think, silver, but this might be a white... Because to be honest, I can't tell the difference. We're going to knock him in the water, so he drowns. Sorry, dude. And then we're going to go get his... Okay, yeah, that was a silver Bokoblin. So, boom. Silver Bokoblin horn, you can see, it has 31 fuse attack power. Uh, compared to, if we were to pull up... You can see here that the base Bokoblin horn from the red Bokoblins gives you 4 fuse attack power. And that goes all the way up to Silver Bokoblins, which are going to give you 31 Fuse attack power. And that means literally you can just, boom, straight up add 31 damage to every weapon you can find, right? That's really powerful compared to the first game. Kind of summarize, right? If you're starting off the game, you want to focus on taking out some Bokoblins and then using those to get a little bit stronger to allow, allow you to take down some Moblins or some Lizalfos. Keep in mind, Lizalfos... You can get uh, elemental versions of them, and those are going to give you Ice Breath Lizalfos Horns, for example, which if we take this out and drop this on a weapon here, now I have the elemental effect as well. So that's going to open up a whole new ballgame, which is elemental weapons. In this game, there's no flame swords, there's no lightning swords, all that stuff's gone. You have to create your own elemental weapons in this game. You can achieve that in a few different ways in this game. As you just saw, I can achieve that through elemental Lazalfos uh, monster drops, but also you can get that through your gemstones. Uh, in the first game, I'm sure you guys remember, you can use gemstones to craft elemental armor. It kind of was whatever. It was, it was not that useful. In this game, each one of these directly correlates to the element uh, that it, as it you know, as it describes, and you can use these and fuse them onto your weapons to get the associated power, which I think is amazing. So if we pull this uh, opal out, fuse it onto our wind long blade here, now it's shooting out water balls instead of doing the wind attack, okay? So you can use those stones to get elemental stuff, and you can use uh, the Lazalfos crater drops, Additionally, you're going to find the game has scepters and uh, rods, and these are going to be kind of the equivalent, closest equivalent to the swords and great swords from the first game. Scepters and rods are, you know, it literally says, uh, wielded by ancient magicians who awoke the latent power of gems. It, it leads you right to it. These are meant for gems, so they sort of make the powers more potent uh, for the associated element. Hopefully this was a little bit more beneficial to you guys that aren't really able to go out there and just start killing Lynels, right? Uh, I wanted to give a more realistic guide on how you're going to be using Fuse throughout your game. For those of you that are still here, I just want to thank you so much for giving me your time. I hope that I was able to respect that with some helpful information in today's guide. Please feel free to drop a like, comment. Uh, I honestly, I, genuinely, I want you guys to provide me with video ideas <laughs> like help me out literally if there's something you want me to do a deep dive guide on or whatever leave it in the comments i want to know 
But with all that said, you guys, uh, again, it's been your friendly neighborhood guide, YouTube guide man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> give me a give me a comment on how to do my intros. That's gonna be wild. Thanks again for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Everybody stay blessed. Stay blessed.